morning. Oh, it seems like an absolute age since I was doing one of these. And that's because it has been an absolute age. Long story short, been a crazy summer. Lots of things going on that I'm sure I'll talk about at some point, but let's not bore you with that right now. Let's take some photos. So I'm down at White Rocks Beach. It's dawn. Now, even though the sun is rising behind this part, I kind of knew because we've had some crazy weather moving past over the last couple of days, that we were gonna have some big old clouds. And even though the sun isn't going to be visible on the horizon and won't be visible at sunrise and so won't be illuminating my foreground, my hope is that it is going to be illuminating some of those big cumulus clouds. And I can already see some of the light taking on now. Cloud cover varied from between sort of 15 and 60%, especially over to the east. So this could all turn into a, a damp squid or it could turn into something rather nice. Um, it's a low tide as well. So a combination of the fact that it's a low tide and the fact that the sun won't be illuminating um, my foreground. I'm thinking more just basically a, a sea shot. Probably a, a vertical composition. Slightly longer exposure. And just basically really slowing down some of those waves coming in. Now the waves aren't as high as I thought they were going to be. It's quite calm this morning. But the big part of the picture, the big part of the image is the cloud. And hopefully the color. So I'm gonna put this away, go find an area that looks interesting and set myself up. It's good to be back. So the sun has now pretty much risen. As I say, it's risen over behind the, the cliffs here. Um, clouds haven't yet taken on too much color, but I've got some other issues. So just down here, the reflections that were coming off the wet sand once the tide receded were beautiful. But the problem is they got all of this foam around. So actually finding a piece of the wet beach that doesn't have that foam, which is quite distracting. Um, I always like to remind people, especially when they're on my workshops, um, the human brain is phenomenal at excluding from our vision what we really do want to see. So we'll look at this, this image here, we'll, we'll look at this through our eyes, and we'll see a beautiful, you know, sheen beach. Our brain goes, you know what, those bits of foam? Yeah, you don't really want to see those, so let's put those into the background. Once you take the picture, however, that's the first thing that you'll see, and you'll go, oh, I wish I'd looked for a, a cleaner bit of beach. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to find that. Um, the second issue I have is with the X-T2. So this is the X-T2. Um, I was an X-T1 owner before. And of course, um, the cable release on the X-T2 is different. Now, I knew this here a couple of weeks ago, and I've just been so busy with other bits and pieces that I just didn't bring up or did, didn't get time to purchase a, a cable release. Um, and when you're doing wave photography, which is what I'm kind of focusing on here, you know, having a two second timer in play, nah. So we'll see what we can make. Actually, there's some nice waves just coming in there. So, so basically what I'm doing is I've got the 18 to 135 on and I'm pretty much right up at 135. And I'm just kind of pitting a little bit of the beach in, a little bit of the sea in at the bottom and really focusing in on those clouds. Still hopeful that they may take on some color. Um, I have a, a four stop ND um, on that's giving me at F13 about three and a half seconds um, exposure. Um, and that's just allowing me to kind of just create a little bit more of a, an abstracty um, image just as the tide washes in. That's why Wellington boots are the order of the day. So I'm gonna carry on just trying to find a kind of 
There's a couple of things that are against me here, as I've said, but it's still great to be back out again with the camera, especially at sunrise, um, when you have this absolutely stunning beach all to yourself. Catch up soon. So it's really important that you take your eye away, uh, eye away? your eye away from the viewfinder. Um, you know, if you literally get your camera set up on the tripod and just start looking through the viewfinder, looking at the back of the screen, you don't, you've no idea what you're missing. So even when you've got your camera set up and everything, keep getting away from that tripod and taking a look and see what's going on. So look at this little bit of color just here. Is that gonna develop? Who knows? Um, I also see that there's a, a squall forming out there. I see gorgeous pink pastel colors on the, on the reflections. These are things that you just don't see when you're focused on the back of your screen. So take a step back from the camera, look around. You know, a morning like this morning, it's about color. It's really kind of what it's about. And that's, that's what I'm looking for. So I think what I'm gonna do now is, talking about the, the sheen, the sheen here is lovely. And actually because I've got a, a bit of a wider view, you really don't notice those foamy bits. So I'm gonna turn my attention now to shooting on this bit of sheen. So step away from the camera, look around in the landscape that you're in, and then set up a composition. So I find these lovely little ripples. Can't really see it right this moment because the tide has just kind of come through. But every maybe couple of minutes, the tide <coughs> recedes enough. It actually is a, a um, well, it's an incoming tide, but it, it's just been low tide a couple of hours ago. Um, and that's allowing me for a little bit of maybe a wider view. Um, earlier, I didn't really have anything worth shooting in, in the foreground too much. But these little ripples just help to kind of lead the eye in. Now there's some big waves coming through again here, so I've got my kind of composition set up. Again, two second timer. Got the four stop ND still on. It's giving me about a two second um, exposure. And it's just giving me, oh, just a little bit of foreground interest, maybe. Just gotta be careful again because that tide does leave behind it. Um, some of the foam and I really don't want to have too much of that or any of that foam in the shot. Now the clouds are still picking up some lovely colour right at the very tops of them as you can see here. So having that foreground, having those ripples gives me that lovely sort of lead in. Bit of two second, three second exposure just to smooth out and calm down those waves a touch and then the lovely um, clouds. All rather nice. And I just see behind me here, you can see here how that sun is actually really now lifting some of those clouds up. So fingers crossed that really starts to kind of maybe spread out a little bit. I think it'll come and go pretty quickly. So I'm gonna get myself set up maybe with one final sort of composition to take the most out of that early morning light. So let's see what, what we can find. So a good example of when an image that looks nice through the eye maybe isn't gonna be that grand through the camera. So I thought I'd bring myself up to the edge of the beach where we have lots of lovely color going on in the wet sand. Um, and obviously some really nice looking rocks. And obviously you've got the archway here. And in the very distance, it's the Jan's Causeway. Um, the big issue being is wasps to begin with. Go away, Mr. Wasp. Um, the big issue is you have um, still lots of foam and there's no color, obviously, with the sun rising behind the rocks, there's no color whatsoever on the, the actual cliff face itself. And I just don't think, please go away, Mr. Wasp. Piss off. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, there's no color on the rocks, foam here. So it's not really an image. And sometimes you can fool yourself into thinking that there is an image there, especially if 
you've maybe captured a couple of nice images already in, in the morning or, or, or when you're out and you kind of just carry on shooting, carry on shooting and you just think to yourself, yep, you know, this is still a nice image. Again, that's where you sort of stand back and as I say, this is quite a nice view to look at um, but certainly not something that I think is working right now um, as, a, as an image. Having said that, um, sunset perhaps. Um, I've been down here before at sunset. I'll show you an image from sunset from this beach now. And as you can see, it can actually be rather beautiful aiming up towards those rocks. They take on that really intense light. So I'm basically just going to carry on looking for more abstract images pointing directly out to sea. Um, lesson learned. I came up here to see whether there was anything going on, but again, I think that foam is just ruining the image. So I'm going to come away from this and look at again at some more of that abstract. Still some beautiful colour going on in, in, in the sky. Actually, speaking of that, now it's improved a little bit. Um, out here, obviously, we've got some gorgeous light in the clouds, but actually above it, at least er earlier, it was clear blue. So you've got to be careful as well um, when you're setting up that composition. You know, you go to the effort of having the, the lovely sort of light on the, on the waves, the lovely light in the clouds, and then you include too much of the blue sky. So just watch your composition in that, in that respect. What I was doing was I was making sure that I wasn't including hardly any of the blue sky in the, in the final frame. Now, there is a little bit more cloud that's come in now, so I can probably pull myself out just a little bit wider. And I think the wasp is gone. Okay, guys, so I'm going to be quick here. Um, basically, pointing back out towards the waves, now what we can see is hopefully that the sun is actually peaking up. In fact, you can see it out here. Another good reason why you take your eye away from the viewfinder. Look what's going on down there. But right now, I'm focusing in here because what we have is a really gorgeous, dark, foreboding sky in the background. And because the sun is now tipping up over the... Uh, landscape it's just taking on some of the light on those on those waves so not going to spend too much time talking to you apologies for that I'm going to focus in here on the waves now I don't have my cable release which is a real pain in the backside um, and because I want precision I am having to fire the shutter with my finger probably what's in my advantage is the fact that everything is kind of fluid here it's waves it's clouds it's sea so nothing is probably going to be ultra ultra sharp I've got a two second or one second exposure anyway um, but oh wish I had my cable release right oh, this is just beautiful well I think that's me done for the morning um, any keepers in there you know what I don't even care it just feels so good to be back out with the camera it's been far 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 too long and a gorgeous morning really really beautiful morning and once again if you know I'm sure you don't need me to tell you but just time out with a camera it's good for the soul just beautiful so hope you enjoyed this um, I am hoping now to get back on track a little bit more with updates on the channel Plenty of exciting new adventures coming up. We're now about eight weeks away from picking up the camper van. Can't wait for that. Um, but a few other trips coming up as well uh, that hopefully we'll be able to sh share on this channel. But yeah, from now, from now, from White Rocks Beach, just outside, outside Port Rush, where, by the way. I don't know how, but I can smell a fry-up. Someone somewhere close to me here is cooking a fry-up and it's wafting on the wind. So guess what I'm, I'm going home to get? You guessed it. Boring cereal. Right. Enough rambling. I'm out of here. Catch you later. Bye-bye.